Since the birth of photography, many incredible photographers have captured their vision of the world through its lenses. Through this sea of countless film, one has stuck out to me due to its unique and intriguing nature, that being Hiroshi Sugimoto and the world that he has been able to capture and portray through the lens of his work. Hiroshi Sugimoto is best known for his black and white photographs of particular subjects. I think some of his best displays are through a series entitled Dioramas. This series of photographs started in 1974 upon his first arrival in New York. He did the average tourist thing and visited the American Museum of Natural History, where he observed the animal diorama exhibits. He's quoted as saying the following, The stuffed animals positioned before the painted backdrops look utterly fake. Yet by taking a quick peek with one eye closed, all perspective vanished and suddenly, they looked very real. I had found a way to see the world as a camera does. I view dioramas as a possible glimpse of what the past might have looked like. The pictures function practically like a time machine, telling the story of the naturalistic life found within the animal kingdom, that of the present and the past, despite the animals captured being completely fake. Even though this was only the first of his works, it had already cemented him as a talented photographer. Another one of his works is the Lightning Field series. To create these pieces, Sugimoto used a Von de Graaff 400,000 volt generator to apply electric charges directly onto the film to, in a sense, capture the intensity of a lightning strike directly within his camera. These images appear otherworldly, as if through these generator charges, Sugimoto was able to peer into a different dimension entirely. The electricity looks as though it's alive, and some it seems to be spreading its roots of light to encompass the film as much as it can while in others, it appears to be dancing along the canvas with its other charge buddies. It all just looks really cool. The final piece that I'd like to discuss is a series titled Seascapes. Seascapes is exactly what it sounds like. They're photographs of the sea and sky in Sugimoto's classic black and white style, which is far more simple and laid back than what I've discussed throughout this video. That simple nature is what I find so captivating about Seascapes. In his blog, Sugimoto had this to write about seascapes. Water and air, so very commonplace these substances, yet they hardly attract attention, and yet they vouchsafe our very existence. The beginnings of life are shrouded in myth, let their water and air. Living phenomena spontaneously generated from the water and air in the presence of light, though that could just as easily suggest random coincidence as a deity. Let's just say that there happens to be a planet with water and air in our solar system, and moreover at precisely the right distance from the sun for the temperatures required to coax forth life. While hardly inconceivable that at least one such a planet should exist in the vast reaches of the universe, we search in vain for another similar example. Mystery of mysteries. Water and air are right there before us in the sea. Every time I view the sea, I feel a calming sense of security, as if visiting my ancestral home. I embark on a voyage of seeing. Oftentimes, we take our planet for granted. Despite us being lucky enough to be granted the gift of life, we never appreciate the randomness of that circumstance. What is the likelihood that our planet would contain both water and air, the two most important fundamentals that are necessary to build life? These two have not been found coexisting on any other part of the universe, just as life hasn't been found on any other planet other than our own. All life on Earth is incredibly lucky to experience the miracle of life, so let us all embrace the beauty of water and air. My favorite piece from Seascapes is that of the Caribbean Sea. Something about it just beams with serenity to me. Truthfully though, these all radiate a serene feeling. A calm void where one could attain nothing but peace. If it were possible, I'd climb into the image, lay in the water, and begin thinking about whatever crosses my mind, as I bathe in true tranquility. Although not the first to do so, Sugimoto certainly was one of the photographers to push the boundaries on what photography was capable of. I view him as a big stepping stone in pushing the narrative that photography could truly be taken seriously, being seen as more than just objective pieces, but as an abstract art form, full of meaning. It feels right to say that he truly is an incredible artist.